Good day, dear colleagues. I apologize for a small pause. We decided to wait a little bit for, for the audience to come. And today we have a session with a fut futurist name, uh, which is a quantum leap in finance. And from the very outset, I'd like to say that the audience here reflects the uh, the presence of quantum technologies in financial sector so our task is uh, to increase uh, the uh, uh, quantum uh, industry my name is uh, dmitry i am from gazprom bank uh, i'm responsible for the quantum initiatives that we have a lot of uh, such initiatives and i'm going to introduce our presented uh, our uh, speakers Ruslan yunusov who works a lot in such organizations and today he is um, member of uh, Rosatom. He's one of the founders of the Russian Quantum Center in Rosatom. Now we have Stas, Stas from, uh, um, uh, from the Moscow State University. He is the head of the team uh, for quantum uh, computation in Moscow State University and head of the scientific group. Uh, he is, uh, so we have two scientists here, Stas and uh, Alexei, who are the representatives of the science, not only finance. Alexei Fyodorov. He is the head of the scientific group of scientific t team uh, in the Russian Quantum Center. He is the founder of two startups. Uh, one of uh, them, one of those startups, uh, are uh, working with post quantum computations, and the other, the other is related to remote uh, connections to qu quantum computers. Uh, we also have Alberta from Sberbank. He is responsible for research and innovation in uh, technologies and of course uh, he is an active participant uh, of uh, various activities related to quantum technologies he's going to tell us about that too mr igor doldovsky who is the uh, general director of spk and emil petrosian emil he is the deputy director of the department of industrial policy of uh, the city of moscow so i have introduced everyone i think i uh, didn't miss anyone and i didn't make any mistake today i'm proposing to speak but now because we are at the fin policy event i'm proposing to talk not about quantum technologies but about how the, what the future is going to be like for these um, quantum technologies in the financial industry because yesterday we, today we have uh, uh, been reminded that uh, the agenda of Finopolis has a session on quantum technologies, but uh, the development of quantum technologies is quite uh, fast in Russia. Nonetheless, so we speak more than we uh, do it in the financial industry. There are some episodic um, uh, pilot projects and small implementations, but if we compare ourselves, can you please uh, turn on the presentation? And if we compare ourselves, for example, with China, which is uh, which does not talk much about quantum technologies but nonetheless they have a big uh, uh, network of quantum communications and uh, china is one of the leaders in quantum computations and uh, of course we have uh, things ahead of us to do and of course we need today to discuss what kind of measures should be adopted so that the quantum technologies in the financial sector can start being implemented and uh, i'd like to start my uh, intervention with ruslan Ruslan, more than 10 years ago, quantum technologies was not applicable in finance. There were some quantum physics and there were some scientific centers and everything uh, to 99%, it was all about science. But we have passed a long, a lengthy path towards the technology. So can you tell us about this, uh, this way and about the roadmap and the future of, of uh, quantum technologies in the finance? Because you were at the origin of this uh, big breakthrough uh, area, and we hope that uh, the breakthrough will happen sooner or later. Thank you, Dmitry. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the history and uh, tell you some in my imagination whether we will be successful or not in finance. It mostly depends on you and it depends on the organizers of the FINO policy. It all depends on the regulation. But actually, you're right that 10 years ago, when we just went to different offices and we said, you know, a quantum computer is something that we're going to build and this is, you know, just something very good thing. But they said this is only a fantasy. And somebody said, well, I never heard what is quantum computer so we had to persuade people that we are not fantasizing that this is mostly a question of engineering rather than scientific although there were of course some scientific issues but now today you go to the office and then they ask you directly now tell me how many qubits do you have there 
Uh, so we say, wow, you already know what is qubits. And so therefore, the progress is very big. And this progress is in the heads of people. Because before, people didn't believe in these uh, technologies at all. They, uh, they said that this would be like in 50 or 100 years. But now they say uh, this technology is going to be in the near future. And then they say, we'll think about it. Just remember, uh, at the P St. Petersburg Forum, one of the participants, he said, you know, we are a big company and uh, here uh, our company is going to be a spectator. We're going to uh, take some popcorn and we'll see how we are going to develop. And Dmitry was uh, kind of angry. He said, you know, just if everybody buys popcorn and not do anything, then nothing will happen. So when we speak about what happened within 10 years, this happened not uh, uh, in front of our eyes, it happened to us directly because we were walking everywhere and trying to push these ideas through to people. As a result, we developed, we made up a special program for the quantum development of the economy. We defended that program and beginning from 2020, a national project was, was launched, which is under the responsibility of Ross Atom Company. So that is why here I'm representing Ross Atom today. And Ross Atom is leading the national uh, project on creating a quantum computer. The horizon is up to 2024. By the end of 2024, we have to create 50 to 100 uh, qubits on some platforms. Such of, uh, one of such computers is being developed by uh, Stas. Uh, he'll tell us he, if he will be able to make uh, 100 or 50 qubits. I think that we will be able to do it. One of the tasks, uh, one of the questions is why we need to do it. You know, what does quantum computer can do? We can, you know, just demonstrate the quantum advantage if uh, there is a computer for 50 to 100 qubits and then the quantum computer will be able to resolve it, but supercomputer will not be able to resolve it. But who needs it? It seems like nobody needs it. Actually, people do need it because this is going to be a breakthrough in technology. Russia is working on that. In the world, uh, uh, there was uh, advantages quantum computers demonstrated already. Currently, we're defending the uh, roadmap uh, of a new program announced by the president, which is the economy of data, and it includes uh, quantum technologies. And uh, within two, 20 to 30 years, we're planning to build a powerful quantum computer so that uh, tasks which are good for the economy being resolved with a quantum computer. And ultimately, we would like to show the advantages of using quantum computers. Good uh, solutions, it means it's going to be a task which cannot be resolved by supercomputer. And it means it's going to be a good economic effect. Uh, what is going to happen in the finance? So is it going to be used in finance? I think it will be used. To because in finance, there are different, you know, optimization, streamlining tasks, uh, different combinatorics. And uh, this can be used uh, with a computer of, uh, with a powerful computer. But Alexei is going to talk more in detail about it because he works with algorithms. But this is not fantasizing. This is a measurable horizon of time. This is like an investment uh, horizon. Uh, so, but many things get stuck uh, in the very beginning because of some regulatory issues. Because people say, you know, do things and uh, after words who are going to develop the regulation. But how about, you know, encouraging the agents uh, so that they start using, uh, start playing and start feeling uh, these uh, technologies in this way, they can accelerate the process of innovation. So this is a uh, difficult question. We don't have a definite answer for that. But if we create a pressure from the bottom, then probably the regulators are going to respond to that. But here it includes not only regulators in finance, uh, it may also include uh, the regulators in other areas. But here in Finopolis, it's more mostly about financial regulators. For example, you know, there are some issues related to uh, standardizations on how to make uh, companies to localize the application of Russian, well, uh, how to, uh, how to make people use localized Russian IT software. Somebody would say that this is not good, you need to create a competition, but imagine that the banking system is turned, is switched off, is cut off from the international system. Then the question of whether it's a cheaper or not is going to be is going to be um, interrupted. Uh, then people will not think about price anymore. I think this is a question about trust. What is first, a hen or an, a hen or an egg? Uh, so, uh, I mean, in the relations between regulatory uh, and the practical implementation, uh, whether th there is a trust on whether it's going to be a profitable or not. And uh, this is one of very important questions that we're going to discuss today. The next question is to Stas. Uh, Stas is a representative of not simply quantum uh, physicist, but he's also one of the heads of uh, 
the plat platforms for the creation of uh, quantum computers uh, based on called the atoms. So can you tell us what is a quantum computer? Because people, many people, they just don't know what it should look like, and therefore they don't believe uh, that it exists. So this is the first question. And the second, no, Ruslan said that it's very important to find a practical application. Uh, are there any practical applications that could be resolved with the help of a, uh, quantum computers? Maybe not the com uh, computers that are made in Russia, but maybe using the computers that are made uh, somewhere abroad. Are there any financial implementations of whether they can be used on quantum computers? And the most important, so when can we see the computer that would have at least 50 to or 100 qubits? Thank you very much. Above all, let me start with that the quantum computer is not a, you know, just a question of belief. They do exist. They do exist as, compu as computational devices. And it's very important because 20 years ago, when I was a second year student in the, uh, phys in the, in the University of Physics, and then quantum computation, it was just only a theoretical game, a theoretical toy. There were some uh, experiments, but th that was mostly about fundamental science and working with uh, quantum computers, you know, running some algorithms. So this was uh, not uh, realistic back then. And back then, people thought that it was just some kind of scientific fiction. Uh, the people were just only thinking about how to make a qubit uh, on a physical um, a hardware, how to uh, uh, how to use them. But uh, within the 50 years, 15 years, uh, there is a whole industry that was developed for the past uh, 20 years. Uh, uh, it's a, we achieved an in incomparable level of technology in the world and in Russia. Yes, we're just a little bit behind, lagging behind. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, uh, both abroad and in Russia, the level is absolutely incomparable to what was uh, 20 years ago. And I think that this is a good reason to be optimistic, because if we are able to, to continue keeping up with the pace, then in 20 years, uh, this technology is going to be absolutely normal, just like any other computers today. Nobody is surprised at the fantastic complexity of those microchips that uh, we are working today every day. But it is absolutely monstrous and colossal. It, it's a huge way that humanity has passed through a single transistor to microchips that we have today in every single telephone or in a camera. So this is uh, beyond imagination. People were able to do it. People have resolved that engineering tasks. When a lot of people are saying that quantum computer is something impossible and it will never work and it will never work, then I say, look, guys, if back in the 60s you would say that uh, uh, computational capacity um, of my device in my pocket is impossible, then I would probably back then would say that it's imp something impossible. But nonetheless, uh, some impossible things uh, are possible if people really need that. And people who have gathered at this conference, if uh, we are able to persuade you that you need quantum technologies, then you would have all the resources to make it a reality. Now, going back to the real situation, the situation, current situation. You know, actually, quantum computers are various, different. Uh, just in a couple of uh, minutes, I'm going to show, you, to show you one of them, the one that we have in our laboratory in Moscow State University. But we have to understand that until now, it is not yet clear what which physical platform or basis is going to be uh, the foundation for the large-scale quantum computer that we will have uh, sooner or later. So currently we're in a situation when there are some uh, several competing technologies and selecting one of them is not yet uh, uh, possible because they have advantages and disadvantages. Maybe they're going to be complementary and maybe we're going to have different uh, devices that are going to be specific depending on the task. Maybe for financial or investment portfolios, so we're going to use some quantum computers based on one basis, and uh, for other types of tasks, we're going to use a device of a different type. In quantum chemistry, they could use a device of a different type with an absolutely different physical nature of the information carrier. This is currently very difficult to predict, but what we know for sure is that we are living in the app 
epoch of quantum advantage, uh, quantum superiority. And Ruslan, I believe that this is a very important step because before people believed that even this was not possible, would not be possible. There are a lot of people who are uh, skeptic, who do not believe uh, in the quantum system of a complexity that would enable us to calculate, which is not uh, calculatable using, you know, just uh, classical computer. So our task is now to make a, uh, some useful calculation, a useful computation, and Alexei is going to talk about it more in detail. I'm not going to steal his uh, time, but let me show you the quantum computer that uh, we have in our laboratory. Laboratory. Just uh, today in the morning, I um, recorded a small video right on m the telephone at the in my laboratory. So uh, just look at it. This is the laboratory in the center of uh, quantum. This is the computer in the uh, center uh, in the laboratory, uh, which is uh, being built. This is a vacuum, special vacuum system that you can see inside which there is a lens which creates uh, an, an array of uh, um, vacuum traps. Uh, these are special, uh, you know, just uh, traps that catch uh, single atoms. And then using single atoms, we encode uh, information uh, or qubits. Uh, and uh, in our case, we use uh, rubidium. So the whole structure that you, you saw on this uh, table, those are lasers that are used uh, to cool down this rubidium so that it could be trapped into uh, traps. And on the screen, you can see uh, picture with uh, with the displays uh, in the, with the monitors because uh, what you can see that uh, it uh, traps atoms and then it creates uh, uh, structures and then you can address those uh, places and then you can make some quantum operations using these atoms. Now, to, to it is a computational thing because uh, the, this whole, whole structure is a processor that is uh, being managed uh, controlled uh, through a classical computer. So this what you see is an interface for the operator which was made uh, for a person to read, for a programmer to read. But actually, the whole system is, uh, you know, it um, uh, uh, the whole system it supports uh, programming languages, which was developed by such companies as, as a a B IBM. All the developers are trying to ensure compatibility, and we're also just uh, trying to ensure compatibility with such language as QASM. And uh, the, uh, having libraries uh, in, uh, in, on the internet, we can program uh, this computer. But here we have to understand that quantum computer is not some kind of next uh, generation com uh, computational device. It's a, a device. It's actually a, a special computational device for specialized tasks, not for general purpose uh, tasks. In finance, also, there are these type of tasks. There are these types of tasks which require a large number of calculations for which it is not uh, for which there are no effective classical uh, algorithms, but improvement of such tasks, improvement of the precision, even maybe by a little, may have a huge financial effect. And for this purpose, we are creating this type of coprocessors. Well, this is impressive what we see on this um, video. It seems uh, just like, you know, uh, it's a... Uh, big pile of different lessons, uh, lenses on the table. Nobody believes that uh, they interact, but actually these things do work uh, within the framework of the roadmap, as far as I know. And this uh, technology has already been presented. How many qubits is it? 16 qubits. It was last year, and uh, this year we are towards the way to 20 qubits using this uh, platform. I think that is going to be even more qubits. I believe that there's going to be even more qubits. Well, for the listeners, uh, for the audience, uh, for the uh, understanding of the audience, uh, this is a breakthrough of Russia in the quantum um, competition because uh, Russia never had a computer of uh, 16 qubits before 2023. Uh, and thank God we have uh, already uh, have the, we have uh, developed such a computer. So let us switch to the next presentation. I liked a lot of this slide. This is a Alex, Alexei helped me to, made it, to make it. Today we spoke a lot about cool technologies. As Stanislav was telling, now they, they seem to us that these are 
cool technology so why didn't make why didn't we make a transistor why didn't we make a, a computer back in the uh, in the past and now we have to do the import substitution and things uh, so why we're lagging behind in artificial intelligence uh, things are much better yesterday we were listening to a very good uh, session we know that there were some breakthroughs in this bear bank, but everybody is uh, you know just uh, uh, trying to um, uh, develop in terms of AI uh, using a neural network of uh, uh, data, but uh, all of these things were based on uh, the uh, Soviet uh, scientists uh, research back then it, the people thought that it was uh, only theoretical because there was no hardware that would be able to calculate these things and in that connection there were a lot of problems related to the you know um, to the uh, disassembly uh, to the collapse of the Soviet Union and therefore lots of things uh, have been missed uh, like such as uh, for example technological revolution and uh, in the electronics uh, and uh, in IT in in programming and mathematics were uh, uh, so currently we are uh, forced uh, to chase after other countries because we don't own many uh, technologies and we don't want to find ourselves in the same uh, position with quantum uh, technologies so because many things uh, that you will be uh, discussing right now but before that I would like to ask you a question now you in addition to being a prominent uh, scientist you're also a great uh, popular popularizer of uh, the sign uh, of science and many people even associate you not with the science but we know that you're an innovator and inventor and uh, founder of several startups what you're specializing yourself on it's mostly related to algorithms and therefore, on the one hand, for you, it is much easier because you can use uh, the machines that have already been created by somebody. On the other hand, it's uh, more difficult for you because there are some practical tasks that you need to resolve and somebody has to formulate those tasks for you. Now, uh, in quantum algorithms, are we behind or are we ahead of others? Do we have any chance uh, to make something in the hardware where we're lagging and secondly from the perspective of practical tasks in the finance probably there you have visited many banks and companies uh, and uh, financial uh, companies uh, and uh, some organizations that are participating in uh, industrial uh, spheres that are working in the industrial spheres so, so what do you think where are we where we should push more where where are we leading where are we on par with colleagues from the united states china or europe okay thank you very much going back uh, to the historical background actually the work of uh, uh, russian scientists and mathematics uh, in terms of approximation of several functions uh, they were trying to resolve uh, some abstract uh, mathematical tasks but then when uh, people thought that it needs to be done with the, uh, using the computers it seemed uh, so complicated that they thought that it would not be possible in the future so it was a task that uh, re required uh, some automated uh, tools and then we saw that within 10 years uh, some a whole community was created and there was a revolution and as a result today we use uh, this type of technologies uh, such as artificial intelligence etc let us go back to 1980s uh, remember the the book that you have mentioned uh, yuri manin which said that are computable, computable things. And this book says to ensure the progress in the sphere of algorithms, we need to build, as Yuri Manin said, we should create a theory of quantum uh, automatic devices. So, so what did he mean? It uh, seemed like to be a very, very unusual idea. Maybe this idea has not yet uh, been formulated well, but it uh, played a very futuristic role because when you look at uh, if there is information that is written in the quantum system and then you can provide a great advantage in the processing of information, then we have a great desire to know whether it's going to be useful. Did the revolution happen immediately in 1980s? No, because uh, from 19 to from 80s to 90s people were thinking you know maybe a quantum computer this is such a system that would help us to calculate just a little bit more complicated atomic 
or molecules uh, tasks, uh, then uh, we can do it on paper or using a classical computer. So from where, from what point there was a better interest? The interest grew from uh, the middle of uh, 90s. Peter Shaw, he said, if there is a com quantum computer, then he is going to break through the cryptographic, uh, the uh, encryption that we have today. So there is a fable today that large, uh, you know, uh, IT companies uh, started uh, uh, hiring uh, physicists in order to work on breaking, you know, these uh, encryption algorithms. And then afterwards, uh, there was an interest. When there was a threat, uh, so there were some practical tasks on that, uh, as if a quantum computer can do th such things as breaking through encryption. What did the scientific society do back then? They didn't say, Peter Shor, you are a great person, you published a great work. They said that, you know, just a uh, quantum computer, we need to, we need, it needs to be built. Now, Peter Shaw, what he did, uh, he said that all the quantum computer can be built and then all the errors that we have can be resolved. And so, as a result, we uh, started progressing and as a result, we have uh, quantum computational devices that can resolve um, abstract uh, mathematical tasks m faster than classical computers. And I wouldn't underestimate uh, the resolution of these abstract tasks because it is possible that in the midterm to the useful superiority is going to be in, uh, not uh, resolving some remote uh, mathematical task, but through understanding which task quantum computer can resolve better and what applications we have for those uh, tasks. We're discussing the history uh, and uh, like, uh, for example, uh, an abstract task was uh, invented for a quantum computer, then they said, okay, it's all finished and then we can, you know, just forget about that. But somebody came and they said that this task is uh, good for use in chemistry or in pharmacy. So therefore, this means a better applicability. So uh, in addition to the interests uh, of businesses and other organizations, all the key uh, achievements in the physics of uh, quantum technologies uh, are uh, there is a consortium because it works well, and uh, these are the uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, applications of that. Uh, and back in uh, uh, all the tasks, all the uh, stories were dedicated to uh, uh, abstract application of quantum technologies. So the uh, quantum technologies uh, topic is uh, being considered by us. Uh, laureates are going to be uh, announced in, on the 19th of December, so there is going to be a reward given. And I invite you to watch it uh, because it's a very interesting achievements that we have, uh, including the quantum technologies. So the scientific prizes and the scientific community has demonstrated uh, the whole fundamental basis of, for quantum technologies, and it's very important. What is being done in the sphere of quantum algorithms? We are currently testing all the systems which are under development. Uh, to resolve uh, important but uh, practical uh, small tasks. So the, computer, the second class computers, uh, which are based on photons, are uh, already, you know, just resolving some uh, uh, tasks based on quantum computer in chemistry, like the, uh, calculating the parameters of molecules. Uh, currently, this is not the best uh, in its, uh, uh, in its uh, performance as compared to classical computer, but it is uh, already used in the financial industry. Financial industry is also setting up a very interesting uh, tasks uh, that a quantum computer can resolve, such as optimization of financial portfolio. Actually, the task of uh, search of the um, uh, uh, search of uh, uh, in the quantum computer is equivalent to the search of optimal solutions in finance. It's a task of scoring, and many models uh, of uh, scoring portfolio scoring are based on. Um, um, quantum technologies and quantum technologies can improve this model. So, so the possibility for improving uh, on related to processing data or modeling the data and today all the large investment ban banks do not simply invest into quantum technologies. They have whole departments inside the banks. Look at just at any investment bank uh, and with a very big probability they may already have agenda on how they are going to use a quantum computer. But no bank would have a center for quantum technologies. Maybe it's an investment uh, value, a value that would come after the revolution. Many banks uh, have uh, run into situations, as it was written in many articles, that there was a small delay in understanding the role of artificial intelligence when the technology was at a very high level. They had to hire expensive specialists and invest uh, in that at high price. Currently, there is a chance for investing at a lower price. And what can really 
promote uh, quantum technologies in Russia. It's a pilot project with quantum computations that we do with uh, Sberbank, with other banks, and we're making some research with, on uh, post-quantum uh, compu computation, on protection of quantum computers. So uh, the algorithms are being developed. We have people, we have specialists, so we have you know, students of Manin, we have Manin's uh, students, and the students of the students of Manin. So there are great ideas on how can we use quantum computers and so the task of the industry of financial uh, financial industry is to provide us with uh, pilot projects now dear bankers please join it because we have here uh, bankers who uh, and uh, so there is a great task on um, uh, launching pilot projects uh, in financial sphere but back then in 50s or in the 60s when the electronics uh, just only started uh, developing it's very important to have a business order business um, tasks uh, for understanding these uh, technologies. Question to Emil Petrosyan. In July, we had the Forum of uh, Future Technologies, a presidential event at which the Sir Sergei Semenovich, Mayor of Moscow, announced the creation of Moscow Quantum Cluster. And I would like to learn, first of all, what is the status of this project, what are the support measures provided, what kind of cluster will it be, what is provided to do there, and why Moscow, Why does Moscow has uh, so much attention drawn to high-tech uh, and IT? When we announced this project, uh, it was quite a large-scale one. What do you plan to do within the framework of this project? And please, if we can, put up the present, put up, put up the presentation on the screen. Good day to you. Big thanks to you, Dmitri. Can I take the clicker off of you, if I may, please? Yes, indeed, we have claimed and shown interest towards this technology, and we are interested in various technologies. We keep de we keep developing on uh, high tech industry in Russia. For this, we have various support measures that we have been uh, carrying out for for many, 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 many year years, and we're also the contractor for this technology. Somewhere we're along with partners. We execute, we try to create some kind of products, that's why. Last year, we made the decision about this cluster approach, and we've started to develop a cross-section, cross-industry clusters. And at the current moment, we have four inter-industry clusters already uh, created. And here, along with our industrial partners, we create a project on creating integral photo, incredi, uh, photons and on to work with this I've got, I've got to know with quantum systematic and we have clusters and automotive industry here we also develop platforms for e-mobile we have pharmaceutical we have a pharmaceutical cluster which consists of major plants and here Moscow is the customer and the consumer of what will be produced in that cluster uh, when we try to do this order also for technologies, uh, for developing many, uh, for developing many pharmaceutical drugs and to create informational systems, here we have a different type of support. And we create infrastructure for startups in the collective uh, center, we, uh, it's an educational center and when we move in this area, we understand that this infrastructure is very important for the creation of uh, industries. And we have here quantum fields that's, that needs certain infrastructure. On drones, we did not create center of collective use. Also, uh, we don't know how to scale it. And also at the forum, we've agreed on and Sergei Semenovich uh, signed the agreement with the Russian Quantum Center, with Rosatom, with created the Moscow Cluster. And uh, here we, together with colleagues, together with Ruslan, plan to develop the infrastructure, first of all, on the basis of Skolkova, and aimed at the development of new projects, the startups for development in the center of quantum technologies. And we also got to know this topic. Uh, we'll take a look at this field and uh, this is the uh, this is the solution that's needed to solve the tasks of uh, we also need that it's important to scale and 
also we need to communicate to the youth first of all maybe even to the kids first of all and that we say that these technologies will be used in five and ten years and it's very important now that people would get to more of this kind of ideas and topics to start to training because this is something that will be used in the future and I was uh, with Stanislav in his uh, cellar of the MSU where we have this amazing round table and I think that I've even stood in this table and I thought that it took I kicked back progress for 20 years but it was a special table I broke nothing so I I came to know this and colleagues and I came there and we started to think how can we use this in the city and then we got to know Ruslan and Alexei uh, colleagues told us that here we had several uh, areas and fields that where can quantum technologies be applied and also to start using them to create uh, some interesting tasks and then to also try doing it at specific examples and uh, to, to, to do data protection and uh, we'll think on today whether we have uh, our own payment tools and products I also think that from the point of view uh, we can uh, we can look at this and see some mechanisms and uh, we can do it in detail and specifically also would like to know what, how quantum technologies can be used in optimizing traffics for solving city tasks related to unloading the project and to optimize uh, the projects of our uh, public transport and uh, to, to we also have some technologies that are finished already and they will be tested and I think that in the coming time the projects that we've outlined will postpone a little bit and will start doing them it's, it's everything that's uh, related to video stream. I think that quantum technologies will allow us to quicker and better analyze the same uh, images to look for people in the traffic to look for some tasks. And uh, here we use different uh, tools used related to AI. And the ones that we can use is there is this one that quantum calculations, quantum technologies will allow to increase the efficiency of these processes that can be used uh, in this field. Of course, it's the education. In education, most of all, uh, we need to use these technologies in order for our future children, for our future uh, scientists to be able to touch this story and then uh, Moscow quantum cluster uh, we will further create this infrastructure in process and in the process of building this we plan to introduce these technologies into the city environment it seems to me that out of all the support measures that can be there uh, from my point of view it's very important that we cannot that we can't start uh, it with benefits but if you don't have any field for using it uh, then it will not be done and getting back to the cluster to the last thesis I think that this approach that we are using now in all the clusters we use the sub-economic uh, cluster and uh, it allows us to do an inter-cluster story and the products that we develop under the framework of the Moscow Fortin cluster uh, we work with this thematic and uh, together with colleagues in the Ministry of uh, Economic Development we work on this model that's connected to the development of drones and uh, we calculate on this information and uh, we actively work on this 
uh, project to develop. We need to open up our sky for drones, and we need to regulate it if there is some software, some links and connections, and uh, together, hand by hand, we can w we elevate, we can work. It seems to me that here, quantum protection technologies can be able, can, can be used in others. When we create a synergy of demands, we plan to, uh, we plan on how we can do it from the side of the government uh, to support the story, to go forward. Once again, I'll repeat myself, if we think about various technologies that we have, uh, and the quantum technologies, that's of course. Yes, thank you very much. I would also like to note the level of tra preparation and training, because from the moment when the clouds was announced up to the current moment, it's only six months that have passed, and you uh, articulate a lot of uh, practical tasks and a lot of companies that we work with in several years were unable to do so. Uh, this amount of real tasks that is that is required first of all for to solve for the population to increase the uh, longevity of life they all have their own application and use the use can the use of quantum technologies is possible first of all colleagues from quantum center i hope uh, that uh, startups that will be born in quantum clusters first of all it's the needs of the city, the needs of the citizens of such a megapolis, and we've tried some uh, solutions on this to continue work in data protection. It's one of the very promising, uh, it's one of the very promising solution, and here we will uh, thank, we'll thank you for doing these clusters, for building them, and now a question to Albert. Albert, we uh, all, especially yesterday, especially recently, know that Spurbank, uh, Spurbank is working a lot on artificial intelligence and a lot of breakthrough solutions. So all the uh, all the field is taking part, great pride in it. And the quantum technologies, what are the best priorities? Where do you see that we have projects? So between us, we had a project on quantum communication. We had a project on uh, which prospects do you see? Which uh, prospects that Spur has on on this big industry. Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to speak here at uh, this platform. And here, uh, let's talk with the audience and you'll thank us for this. Dear colleagues, you all came from various organizations and I'm sure that f uh, private entities don't go to uh, Polis, but name an organization that has one person that dedicates 100% of his or her time to quantum technologies. Raise our hands, please raise your hands higher. And I see three hands of all of all the. Yes, uh, it's as it's PSB. Not only not only uh, it all starts with us dedicating to a task and in this regard Russian Quantum Center, Quantum Center of MSU, Gazprom Bank, uh, we need to say big thanks uh, that Ruslan Yunusov in the beginning of his presentation said that we did a lot to develop it. You are doing fine, you're doing nice and uh, our first project in Sberbank was on quantum encryption many years ago when I came to Sberbank I think that I was signing the closing documents for this and it is done. But Let's ask ourselves a different question, a rhetorical one. Why are we here and why are we here in this room and why are we discussing financial quantum leap? Quantum leap, you know this movie? Why? It was not uh, called because of, uh, we did a lot of quantum technologies. I don't agree with it and it's not because of that. Let's uh, make our discussion uh, a more interesting one. So it's not only about optimism and successes. Uh, we can uh, imagine that quantum technologies did a step forward and I think that uh, they characterized, that gave a very good characterization of the most important thing that's happening right now. The world is changing. It's on the verge of transformation of all the business process related to AI 
And this is the biggest reason why we are all discussing it and historical parallels and similarities that were there and uh, the conference in finance and we discuss implementation of computers we in, with, why do we why do we implement quantum computing and we're at the very same uh, point just as over 100 years before when we're thinking on whether we do need uh, computers the same goes for quantum calculation because real revolution is not in quantum real revolution is artificial intelligence and quantum com computing and people who were involved with artificial intelligence did not feel it before uh, they started to have this generative artificial intelligence and open AI why because it seems that uh, there is no end to the growth of artificial intelligence at the current moment the scientists see nothing of sort so however uh, the amount of investment that we would invest in our data centers to generate this artificial intelligence and uh, we do so to increase the quality of models and the most high quality artificial intelligence is done by those who invested uh, the most billions in this investment furnaces we Waste, uh, we spend approximately 15% of all the energy generated in the world on these data centers. I think that generative artificial intelligence will amount to an even higher share. And so it means that leadership belongs to the people who invest the more. And how can we do it uh, so that we undermine it all? And uh, in reality, we find out that it's a big surprise. Those uh, who are doing so well in quantum technologies and quantum field had the opportunity to do everything but cheaper. It's clear, so it is a different paradigm of approach to calculations and computing, and that's why we're here today, because we have transformation of the world. From the point of view of business process, we have artificial intelligence. That is one of the uh, engines for this, for this transformation. And uh, there's also an opportunity to uh, undermine uh, to undermine this so this is the most important reason why we're all here now in this very room and it's very important to understand so let's move on to the next one the story does not end on this and why is it so interesting to us it uh, who bought uh, h100 you know how many h100 we have in russia gpu oh, hundreds open ai has tens of thousands and all the, ven all the vendors together have decades, if not hundreds of thousands. There are no more orders placed on NVIDIA, even from China. This is the resource that uh, uh, generative intelligence works on, and it's unavailable to us. Surprise, surprise, we can do it all using, we can do the same thing using quantum computing. Well, not exactly the same thing, but some very important elements. So, I continue to work uh, in, with robot robotics. Uh, there is this thing in robotics that's called exoskeletons. Some of you might have heard about them. So, quantum computing is the the exoskeleton for our regular computing. It's not something that will replace them. It seems to me that we haven't touched on this topic yet, but we need we still need to understand quantum computing is not a replacement to traditional computing. For decades, we'll not have uh, quantum computing like GPU, CPU and others and this is an exoskeleton uh, using the words of steve jobs it's a bicycle for the regular uh, for the regular pc we still need to have our we still need to have it all we still need to have something and with this help of this computing paradigm that alex told us about this unique algorithms based on quantum features of the physical world we can do a part of computing that surprise surprise cost incredibly high and we don't put them in the furnace of our data centers all this money and this is why we're discussing it now this is the biggest reason that the reason is not in the success of the world around us in quantum computing in america in asia and europe the reason is not in the success of the quantum center no uh, they are there of course the successes are there but the reason is uh, this transformation and now you understand why i'm here Yes, th this is why all of us, Gazprom Bank and others, many other organizations, 
listen with great attention to what's happening and what is the signal for this of course we have a technological we have a tech visionary it, it's very clear and we all listen to what they said but the most important thing is uh, when they talked about tasks we've heard about quantum supremacy and all this uh, things related to quantum supremacy. My colleagues from Gaspar tell say one very important thing about quantum usefulness. Quantum usefulness. In quantum quantum usefulness, we have two very important conditions, prerequisites, that very often we uh, misjudge. Yes, another very important task is quantum computer is nothing. Quantum, quantum PC is nothing. The most important thing is the task. Uh, if you have the task, you have the goal. The golden rule. The golden rule is who has the quantum task has the has the goal. And if you have this task and you need to know what to do, you don't need to invest there. So the task is the task has two very important features. First, is it has to be economically efficient and uh, economically there is no. Uh, there is no use and this is just a mathematical mess and the second very important thing they allow for quantum supremacy and it can really facilitate and speed up the process so that no one will be able to catch behind and uh, this is very important for the task that you find and if you still think about it and employ a, pr a specialist who will do quantum computing, and I hope that I inspired you to do so, please set him a goal not to purchase a quantum, not to, not to purchase a quantum PC, but to find a task for quantum computing. And then Alexei will be happy, Ruslan will be happy, Stas will be happy, everyone will be happy, and they will have tasks that they will solve for you. Thank you very much. We have time for one question. I'll ask. It's a it's a uh, question of not, for which I would like to give the floor to Igor. Igor is a representative of NSPK. I remember the meeting where when we brought bankers following the request of Organic Alliance Kurbagatova, we brought them to Quantum Center and they almost had a fight because of discussion protocols. We have, uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of cases. Uh, I think we're the first company in Russia who piloted a post quantum cryptography. And uh, what changed starting from previous year? What inspired you to do so? And uh, it's very important to do the implementation in this financial industry because we have an amazing company in the SPK that's responsible for the whole infrastructure and that has to be protected for sure. Please, someone give the floor to them. Thank you. I would like to say that we were really skeptical uh, on the other test that, that's related to quantum distribution, but not the post-quantum cryptography. And, of course, when we speak about some specific task, our specific task is to protect from quantum computers, to defend from them. At the first stage, they will not be our own, they will be foreign that have uh, really leapfrogged to the future quite a lot. And for us and SPK, we have lots of things related to quantum computing. These are the neural networks, they're training the neural networks and accelerating them. The acceleration that we have on, that we have on our quantum computers because it allows us really for a degree in acceleration bi bi biometrics uh, machine learning and other tasks and of course the tasks of uh, discrete optimization they're here and quantum computing has an advantage in solving these tasks and on quantum cryptography uh, it's very important payment tools and solutions that plays an important role and well know that today it's, it's well known that four to six thousand uh, logical qubits is sufficient enough for any algorithm of symmetrical cryptography to 
and symmetrical entropy uh, to be sized down by two times and the symmetrical entropy would be just broken. So that's why we conducted the research and the results are as follows. Four to six thousand qubits is the amount of qubits required to break any cryptography means that quantum computers approximately 20 25 million qubits will use because of this decoherence feature in quantum computing leaders of the market ibm and google commit uh, up to the end of this decade to create a million qubit quantum computers and if we uh, think that we have a moore's law in quantum computing uh, and by two times the number of qubits decreases shrinks every two years in this case this two twenty million by the end by the middle of next decade will be reached these are just some ideas and the post quantum cryptography well in the post quantum algorithms that have been developed now and some of them are already standardized uh, they are based on solving other new uh, tasks such as optimizing using algebra grid and uh, quadratic systems to do linear uh, to do linear equations algorithms and hashing and all these tasks absolutely are not difficult and for the first it's, it's done for the first time because uh, logarithmic tasks approximation tasks with a floating calculation point they're no longer impossible to solve at the same time these algorithms many of them underwent serious analysis of crypto analytics and as i've said uh, earlier today they are standardized and what are the operational uh, algorithms and we see that these characteristics are uh, different from the protocols uh, the, uh, the the discrete uh, times and to create the signatures uh, these are the different algorithms and we decided to uh, try them on uh, our information systems and along with uh, comp along with other companies of taking a look at how these algorithms will be used in how how will how will they be used in uh, systems for banks to talk with the payment options and we've replaced algorithms that are used now in this semi test regime and they're used in one of the post quantum algorithms and uh, they're used for encapsulation of the key and we will also add uh, kyber algorithms that is uh, the standard for um, for the topic so uh, we uh, the results were expected and uh, they're in the same so that when we transfer large volumes of data uh, there is no big difference and the difference is that we have some quantum ideas to shift uh, to see 56 bit and uh, to fight this proilus and to do this fin financial industry and entropy that's done in 128 bits and uh, the data speed fell down by 30 percent which is no big deal and uh, the next stage is uh, that allows us to evaluate the impact of the new post quantum cryptography on the transactional things. And uh, here we have a lot of uh, limitations and protocols on limiting the, uh, not the rate of data. We also have our, we also have our the first assessments that we obtained. They tell us that the most important crucial parameter is the data exchange transfer speed. This is another task because uh, if a client uh, device is passive, then it requires quite a lot of energy in order to ensure high transmission of data. 
and a lot of other tasks uh, that are evolving from that. And we understand the whole volume of work that needs to be done, uh, that we all need to do uh, during the transition of post-quantum encryption. And this is related not only to some certain uh, industries such as finance. This is, uh, these are the changes happening everywhere. And these are uh, algorithms uh, such as ITLS, IP network, uh, communication equipment, uh, everything needs to be upgraded. Everything needs to be uh, modernized. And the applications on the client uh, devices and the client devices, uh, all of them need to be upgraded. So this is a giant work that needs to be done. And uh, processing solutions needs to be upgraded. Uh, this is the task for maybe 10 or 15 years uh, and uh, therefore you know just approach to these uh, tasks uh, or creation of some kind of roadmaps uh, this needs to be done today i think that this is a great approach because you know with this type of approach i think that uh, we your company is going to be the first company in the world in the processing which is protected from quantum attacks and quantum technologies yeah they were forced to do it but yeah we have this understanding of that we're forced to do that but not everybody believes they they are forced to do that well we are uh, following the agenda very well. I'd like to thank all of you. You know, just a fascination with the financial industry is obvious from how many people are here in this uh, room. And I thank you very much. See you later. Thank you.